I had a client the other day post something controversial in our private group. He said, Josh, my wife just asked for more space. I know your approach is different, but I think it's best to just let her leave for me to move on to another woman. Her texts are coming in less frequently and she may be even seeing someone else. I need to move on to show her what she's missing. Look, I get it. He wants to move on. He's hurting and wants to end the pain. I see so many men who watch my videos comment similar things. If she wants to leave, let her go. You are dealing with defilement. Work hard to save a marriage? Nope. Then it becomes a job. If she's left you, lock the door. If you think your marriage needs to be saved, it's already too late. The thing is, following down this path of avoidance and self-protection only leads down an isolated road to a land of regret. Using this approach can be a deadly mistake because it fails to address the real reason she wants space in the first place. And after working with over 1,200 plus men in the past year alone, I can confidently say that not only do I know why she wants space from you, but what you need to do to have a regret leaving you in the first place. Now look, I get it. You're up in your head in a panic. You may be thinking that she is just using space as some excuse to break it off later down the road. Or maybe she's secretly seeing another man to weigh out her options between you and this guy. Just stay to the end of the video because I will show you that thinking those thoughts is a proven way to lose her for good. However, once you implement the five lessons in today's videos, she'll start to miss you more. She'll increase your attraction toward you and eventually give you another chance. All right, let's go over the five lesson advice I gave on that man's post that allowed him to take correct steps to get her back while maintaining respect. We will first uncover the biggest misconception men have with their wives in this process. Secondly, how you are secretly controlling her without you knowing it. Third, how to uncover the real reason she asked for space in the first place. Number four, how long it will take her to actually come back. And the fifth and final one, I always say the best for last for the algorithm, but the most powerful action you could take to start that process of getting her back. Let's jump into the first one. The first lesson is that you lost your frame. I can't tell you how many times I'll hear a guy, he'll join the program, right? Because the wife will say, I need space. And objects in motion tend to stay in motion, which means when the guy takes action to come into the program, she doesn't come back right away. Things usually get worse before they get better because that's the direction she was headed anyways. So we'll come into the program and then she'll hand in the divorce papers or then she'll, from the space of a different room, she'll want to move out of the house. Or maybe they'll find out that now she's having an emotional affair with another guy. And now they're like, okay, that means it's over. Now I know it's over. Before, she's never taken that step. She's never actually given me the papers. She's never actually moved out of the house before. Now it is over. Why is that the biggest mistake you can make and the biggest misconception? You see, you lost the frame. Let's take an example of a client I recently talked with about this. So he said, Josh, we've broken up multiple times where she said it was over, but she never used the words divorce. And that's how I know it's over because the other day, you know, we were arguing back and forth and she said, you know what? I want a divorce. That was a taboo word for us. I knew that she meant it when she actually used the D word. For you, are there moments where, or things that can be said that just cross the line where you know she means it? For some guys, it's seeing another guy. For other guys, it's like, okay, she moves out of the house. But the thing is, here's the truth. Rejection is never final, okay? Neither is acceptance. What I mean by this is that you are the determinant of whether it's over or not. You're the one that actually has more power in this, all right? You are saying, because of this symbol of the divorce papers, I am choosing to believe, I am giving meaning that it is over, right? Now let's look at how the concept of frame falls into this. With that one client, every time his wife over the years said, I'm done, or it's over, she even left the house at times. He said, you know what? I know it's not done because she never used the D word. But there's other men that I've spoken to that the wife says I'm done, they believe it. So what's the difference here? You as the man get to determine whether she means it or not. And because you are the one that determines the frame or the meaning behind what's happening, you get to act moving forward in that direction. So here's what I mean. Let's take these two guys, right? Let's say the guy who said the divorce papers means it is over, it is done, that is solved. It's a piece of paper, it's government issued, all that stuff. There's no chance. I can't tell you how many times or how many men in my program you will see where the wife gave the divorce papers and the guy's like, it's just a piece of paper. She's my soulmate. It's just a piece of paper. That is a test for me. You see, every single time the wife said it's over, I'm done, his frame was, you draw a picture out like a frame, right? His frame is, it's still not done. It's not over yet. The fat lady hasn't sung, okay? There's still a chance. And because that was his frame, the way he acted toward her is he called her. He was motivated. He listened to her. He said, baby, it's not over. I'm gonna fight for you. And he won her back. But because he fell into her frame, she said it's over again and he believed her. That was your biggest first mistake. The misconception is that now you fell into her frame. 
right? That new echelon of rejection, whether it was moving out, whether it was another guy, whether it was the divorce papers, that shifted your belief of it being possible. But if you recognize that it's not over until you believe it's over and you have that belief, your belief will sway her because the true masculine, it leads and the feminine follows. The moment you believed her, you fell into the feminine, right? You believed her story. You weakened, you broke, okay? She is the one that broke you, but you allowed it to happen. And she wants to be with a man that no matter how much she cries and screams and says it's over, that you're there for her. I know it's chaotic. I know it doesn't make sense. I know it's crazy. I know it could be stupid at times to us men, but that's just the nature of the feminine because they have the beautiful side and they have the chaos side, right? The dark feminine. But you as the man, it is your duty on this planet to have your masculine, powerful light lead her out of that darkness, right? And by believing her with those papers or moving out, wherever the case may be, you fell into her frame and you lost, but it's not over yet. And because you lost the frame, you most likely fell victim to the next lesson. The illusion of control is this next principle I taught this man. So I have a client personally I'm working with in the program one-on-one. -on -one. Now, when you meet this guy, you would like him instantly. He is a very nice guy. And he told me recently that his wife would constantly accuse him of being controlling. And at first I'm thinking to myself, how is that even possible? Until he showed me a text message thread. Now, before I tell you exactly what I saw, let me tell you my personal story. I witnessed of another man where I could actually have the perspective of the wife, of your wife, if she's called you controlling. So I'm working with an employee, okay? And he wanted a raise. He brought this up very indirectly, but I just wanted to hear the number he wanted. So I simply asked him, I said, okay, yeah, what do you think you deserve per hour? Well, I don't know. I mean, like uh, with inflation, uh, I mean, uh, the job post said I should probably make making this much. And I don't know, like, I mean, what do you think? Do you think there's a good number? Like, I, I just tell me the number. Like, we disagree, we'll, we'll come to a conference. Tell me the freaking number. By him not being direct with me, it felt very manipulative and controlling, but he was afraid to say what exactly he wanted because he didn't want to upset me. He had nice guy tendencies himself. And here's the thing, in the text message thread with the client, I saw exactly within a split second where his wife thought he was controlling. You see, she was trying to ask him questions about Thanksgiving. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? All of these things. And he could not give a direct answer. He said things like, well, wh wh what do you want? I mean, do you think it's best for you to do this? Like, how do you feel about this? And then when she got upset, he, <laughs> and I t this is my part, partly my fault because I teach these skills to you guys, but he did it in a very robotic nature. This is why you need a coach to guide you. But he said, well, you must feel frustrated that I I'm not giving you the answer you want, right? And he was underneath all those words. Like I talk about communication letters, underneath all those words, the overall message between them was, I just want to make you happy. Do whatever you want. And that is the biggest issue when it comes to the illusion of control, is that by trying to alter her perceptions, by trying to make her happy with you, by trying to convince her to like you, you are doing the opposite. She sees you as controlling, which is low value, low status, and she is disgusted by that. She is, why, why are you not being a man, right? Why are you not telling me what you want? Because a high value man, an apex male, has no fear of conflict. You upset her, okay, yeah, this is, what this, Josh, I deserve 50 per hour. Great, I don't think so, but let's talk about it, right? You see what I mean? And with your wife, she wants to know what you want. Stand by what you want and embrace the conflict. The core of this illusion of control is that you're trying to control her emotions and avoid that conflict. And when you can embrace it and have the right toolkits and tools and skills to go into the conflict and know how to deal with it, what happens is that she maintains respect for you and after respect comes the safety and then the attraction. But by constantly trying to alter the by the way she feels, even if your intention is just to make her happy, it is manipulative, okay? Now this core sense of illusion of control stems from a deeper, even deeper core root issue that I'm gonna address in the next lesson. Walking away is weak. Now, referring back to those guys who comment on my videos saying, well, first of all, why would they even watch a video how to get their wife back if they partly didn't want to, right? But that's, we'll, <laughs> we can address that in another video. <laughs> the point I'm making is walking away can be a strength at times, right? I'm not saying that's not possible, but when you do so from a place of anger or pride of like, I'm better, I'm better than her, that is masking your insecurity, okay? Now, obviously those guys don't come to my program because why would, why would they? It just doesn't make sense. They want to walk away. Why would they come to a program to win their wife back? The point I'm trying to make is at the core root of it, those men are gonna go from one relationship to the next, always in this path of avoidance, okay? Just saying, it's all her fault, you know, it wasn't me, right? She's the one that left me in it, she cheated on me, she's a whore, whatever the case may be, but not looking in the mirror, okay? Now, a lot of the guys in our program, they don't do that because that is the, that is the literally enemy of who we are here, the opposite of an apex male, someone who blames outside circumstance. But every single man I work with, myself included, 
we all have shades of degree of this, okay? I'll be a little bit honest with you about my own relationship, you know? I, I'm a licensed therapist, I do this for, you know, how many years, whatever, I'm not perfect in my relationship. I got an argument the other day with my partner, okay? And it's so easy for me to think, well, I'm a licensed therapist, I have a master's degree. I look at all the, if she just did this, if she focused on that, then everything would be okay. I still fall victim to that. But that puts me on this pedestal, right? That I'm better than her. And she feels that, she's intuitive as hell, my, my partner, right? So she calls that out because that's, that's the beauty, beautiful thing about any relationship you get in is that your partner will see inside you that no one else can and see those as a gift. What she's calling out in you is a gift of something to work on to improve yourself. It is a lesson to be learned. And if you choose to blame her in outside circumstances for what things that have happened to you, especially in this relationship, your wife has given you, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a woman say, or a wife I've gotten a call with say like, exactly what the guy's issue is. What an opportunity and a gift for you to be able to work on that, okay? Try to take your ego out of it for a second and see what she's saying from another perspective. Because if you don't, even scientifically, you will not be happy. This article shows exploring the association between attachment style, psychological well-being, relationship status, and young adults in a cross-sectional study. I'm gonna summarize the whole thing for you. The individuals in relationships, they were able to take ownership of their emotions, which is a securely attached pattern. We're able to go on and have better, longer, thriving, happy relationships and perform in better, all areas of life a lot better. And you have to recognize your part in this. You attracted her, okay? You influenced her. And so many men cannot see how their behavior did this over time. But when you can come in and see a coach or yourself, read some books or have this awareness about how your behavior did influence her, and you take that corrective action, she will change. She just does. It, it's, it's impossible for her not to, right? Now, how long should you wait to get her back? Now, this, the answer to this question, actually, I'll, I'll say it's said. Now, what is the percentage based on your situation that you can win her back? This is probably the most valuable answer you're ever gonna get. And I bet you a lot of you, if I can tell you the, if I can promise to you that you get on a call with our team right now, and I can tell you the exact percentage based on thousands of scenarios of getting her back, the likelihood based on all the factors, you probably hop on a call right now, right? Well, I'd rather give you truth and have the possibility of you joining our program, okay? You're not gonna like this answer, but I don't care. I'm gonna give you the truth, right? Even if you click away and all this stuff, you are focusing on the wrong question. I'll tell you the right questions to ask, but first let me tell you, the man that you are is not the man that gets her back. If you are thinking from that frame, that perspective, you're still trying to protect yourself. You're like, well, if it's not 100%, I'm not gonna risk the energy and the effort. Again, going back to it, I get it, but you're just another color of the same men that are commenting on those videos, right? What's the percentage likelihood I can get her back? I just need to know, it's that, it's that it comes from a place of anxiety. If you look in at yourself and ask, what part of you is asking that question? It's fear, it's anxiety, it's worry. And if that's the man you are, if you follow those thought patterns and those beliefs, you are becoming the man that does not get her back. So what are the questions you ask instead? You should be asking, what kind of man gets her coming back again? When did I fall off being the man she fell in love with? Why am I really trying to save this marriage? And then after you ask that one, then after you answer that why, ask why five more times. You see, the quality of the question you asked determines the quality of your life. And if you're asking the wrong questions, you're not gonna like the answers you get. Formulate better questions. There are a list of good questions you can ask yourself and an inquiry process that allows you to actually become the man that does inevitably get her back. But asking the percentage you'll get her back or how long should you wait, it's not the right questions. And the beautiful thing about this outcome is that when you start to change your inner narrative and ask the right questions, like I said, you become the right man. And then when you are that man, there's still one final hurdle to overcome before you get her back. She's gonna make it difficult for you and you should want that. Let's apply this to the dating context, right? And hopefully you agree with me here because if you don't, you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Sorry, but let, let's, let's see, okay, let's see. You have two women, right? Let's just say you, you're, uh, your wife or another woman, she's another woman, has a twin, but they're not actually related by blood. They just look exactly alike. Same exact woman, right? And you meet them on one on a Thursday night, one Friday night, one on a Saturday night, okay? Uh, both at different parties you went to. Everything the same with both of these women, okay? But Mrs. Friday night says, I love you the first night, has sex with you the first night, and says, I wanna spend the rest of my, my life with you on the first night. Where the other woman, yeah, she says, yeah, call me next week. Well, we might go out. Plays a little bit hard to get. You should, most of you men should. We have other issues. You should call me if you, have, if you want the Friday night woman, okay? But, <laughs> You know, obviously you want your wife, but you get the point I'm making, right? But you want it, her to make it hard for you, okay? And if you value Saturday Night Woman more, who makes it hard for you, then you should also value her making it hard for you now, right? She values herself, and that's why she's making it hard for you. Because 
you've softened up, you've gone easy. You stopped dating or you stopped gaming or you stopped being your best self. You started giving away parts of yourself to make her happy. But in the end, what did you have left? You gave her all of you and there's none of you left. She has nothing to love. Do you see that? By trying to make her happy all the time, you have nothing left. There was parts of you that she was so enamored with, like just looking up to you were the man to her. And a part of you still is. You're a good guy, you know, you're roommates with her, she loves you, but you lost that sexy, masculine, take the world mentality with her. Maybe you're good at your career, sure, but there's that other component where you were mindful, present, giving, with boundaries. You knew how to say no to her, and she likes it when you say no to her. You see what I mean? And she's testing you because she wants you to see that you are still that man. All those tests are a way to swoon her. And if she tested you with the same things early on in the relationship, you would pass with flying colors. Now, there's a whole video on tests right here if you wanna learn how to pass those tests if you're not confident on that, okay? That's all I got for you today, man. Hope you enjoyed the video. Smash like, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.